We have here back on our studio Dr. Melvin Sanikas. He is a Bacolod nun, but he's now based in Zurich. And he is also a foremost expert of SARS CoV 2 and COVID 19 and has been um, consulted by various media outlets and the other um, institutions regarding his expertise. He's a vaccinologist. And full disclaimer lang, uh, he's a good friend, he's a dear friend, and also a schoolmate. Uh, in University of Negros Occidental Recollectos. Of course, the Bong Sikat Pasha Worldwide. And I'm really very proud to have him back here as he has been an, a very important resource for the NX News regarding the current pandemic. Dr. Melvin, how are you? Hello, hello, Miss Hannah. Hello, yes. How are you? Um, okay, man. Um, uh -huh. Today, uh, Switzerland opened. Uh, most of the businesses na kay oh, good. vaccination coverage nagsaka na and uh, mas kinindi ko gani uh, part of the vulnerable population uh, ma-vaccinate ma na ko in 3 weeks so Oy, that, nice. that's good yeah, uh, the rest of the world is also following that trend, no? As the, the way I understand it, CDC has already advised the United States that it's uh, safe na not to wear masks. And I think um, in other parts of the world, we are also um, very positive on use, except for a few flies in the ointment, like what's happening in India, for example, uh, which is experiencing, I believe, uh, I think it's a second wave, no? So, um, but, um, there's been a lot of talk lately because of the mass vaccinations and there's been a very hopeful sign that finally we might be able to beat um, COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 and its uh, various variants. Uh, and there's this term, this phraseology that is coming up every now and then that gives everybody hope and that is what we call herd immunity. Uh, for the sake of our viewers, what exactly is herd, herd immunity? Because the World Health Organization has um, been putting out information about herd immunity. But what is it really? And are we, as if we listen to the current news, are we really going towards that particular trend? So um, when you say herd immunity, um, it is also called community immunity or population immunity. So mm -hmm. they all mean the same thing. Um, it's the indirect protection from an infectious disease that happens when um, a significant portion of the population um, is immune, either through vaccination or through natural infection. So pueding, puede because of vaccines or because of mm -hmm. natural infection. And the number um, that we talk about is yung r not. r not is the, um, the number of uh, people that an infected person can infect. Diba? So mm -hmm. for example, if the r not is 2, an infected person can infect 2 other people and so on. Mm -hmm. and we calculate the herd immunity threshold depending mm -hmm. on the r not. So, kung mas mataas ang r not, let's say measles, diba? Measles is the most contagious infectious disease. The r not is around 12 to 18. So, the herd immunity threshold is around 95%, 90 to 95%. So when you say threshold... Like, ah, mm. <laughs> when I say threshold, yun yung um, number na dapat ma-reach for us to uh, reach the herd immunity. So, lain lain siya depende sa disease. Mm -hmm. For this particular disease, COVID-19? So, for COVID, ang r not is around 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. um, and, so if you calculate the herd immunity threshold, it will be around 70. So, 60 70. to 70 percent. Yeah. 60 to 70 percent. So, how do we, uh, for the sake of our viewers, paano ito na malabot ang amusin ang uh, numbers? Well, uh, ang pinaka safe way is through vaccination. Vaccination okay, still. Um, the more people you vaccinate, uh, the the less people are susceptible. So ang ang virus mas jutay ang pwede uh, uh, infect na tao. So, what would be the factors that people should watch out for that are good indicators that we are going uh, towards herd immunity? May mga well, specific um, factors tanga ginalantaw. Mm -hmm. 
So mm-hmm. besides the number of people na, na na vaccinate, we can look at the number of cases and the number of deaths. Um, mm-hmm. Although hindi na siya uh, makita the son, mm-hmm. um, siguro several weeks after, because um, you know, ang ang vaccines usually two doses, di ba? Mm-hmm. And, and you only expect the optimal um, optimum protection two weeks after the second dose. Mm-hmm. So um, we can look at the number of um, people na fully vaccinated, and uh, a few weeks after that, um, we expect um, the cases to go down, unless um, wala na public health uh, measures, eh, kaya kung wala na restrictions, ang mga tao wala na mask, even if you vaccinate many people, manap tagya pon. So dapat, oh, yeah. we should remember that um, the increase in, in in vaccination should come with the public health recommendations kaya pon. So let me make this clear. Does it mean nga, if you have already vaccinated and if you have already your second dose, that doesn't mean that you are going to get rid of the protocols? Not yet. The, Unless, not yet. Unless mm. damo na ang na, na vaccinate, like sa US, di ba? The yes. reason why they they said na pwede na kuwaon ang uh, hindi na magusar mask, kaya mm. nakalabot na sila sing specific threshold within um, the country na na vaccinate. Doc, um, I would like to take this opportunity for you to ex- um, not really explain the phenomenon, no. But there seems to be a certain resistance, especially here in the Philippines, when it comes to vaccination. And as we all know, we have uh, we are also monitoring your Facebook page, and we have noticed that you are trying to counter um, all these misinformation, disinformation about uh, COVID vaccines. Uh, tell us, Doc, what are the top three misinformation that you have encountered so far about COVID vaccines? That would, you know, <laughs> prevent people from us, for example, to to reach herd immunity, and at the same time, it would also be a counterproductive to uh, current institutional measures to kill the virus or to stop the virus at least. Uh, let me think. <laughs> Top three. <laughs> siguro, yeah. Uh, the most dangerous say, or the most pervasive? Yeah. Uh, siguro I would say ang um, Ang isa sa pinaka naglaptagid recently is this uh, um, fake information about this Nobel laureate, uh, French Nobel laureate, saying kuno nga after two years, tanal nga tao nga nagpa-vaccinate, mapatay. Hmm. Yeah. So this is one. Um, uh, I would say the other one is um, ang ginahambal nga ang... COVID vaccine will actually give you the disease when we know that it's not possible because mm-hmm. none of the vaccines that are available at the moment, none of them have the live virus. So, may ara kita type of uh, vaccine, a live attenuated, which means it's a weakened form of the virus, pero wala sing amuna subong, wala ta sing amuna nga vaccine for COVID. And the third one I would say is um, ang misinformation nga gahambal nga pagmabakunahan ka kuno may microchip nga tracking whatever you do tracking device oh yeah tracking device or something i i think those are the top 3 na yeah pervasive yeah how are these dangerous though so it is dangerous because it's confusing people you know mm-hmm. um kun wala sing mga amuning nga uh, misinformation nga galapta mas madamo sing tao nga mapabakuna and uh, ang, ang confidence sa vaccine Traffic. will be high but if there are a lot of these misinformation nga galakta syempre ang kay kabudlay mag ano mo mag-explain sa tao um, i think it's normal for us that um, once we become scared of something it's difficult to unscare people yes uh, I, I think it's just okay. natural um, there's another one. Uh, COVID-19 vaccines cause blood clots. Ini ano basahan ko ni? Uh, so, what can you say about it? Okay. So, I, I think this is because of the AstraZeneca um, blood clot uh, issue, which at the moment, ina studio pa si mga scientists. Because mm-hmm. maybe it is really causing 
very rare cases of blood clots in the population. Mm-hmm. Kay iban gani nga countries sa uh, Europe gin stop na nila ang pag-using AstraZeneca vaccine for women below 40 years old. Kay nakita nila nga mga uh, mga mga affected ay mga babae nga uh, over 40. So mm-hmm. we don't know really kung ano ang rason could be hormones or could be many other things. Kabudlay maglantaw kay very rare in case. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's important to emphasize that the the virus itself can cause blood clots. Okay. Much much uh, higher. Yeah. Ang yeah. Um, there seems to be in a general observation, Colonia. I don't know if this is accurate, but there seems to be a general mistrust towards big pharma. In general, maybe, and then that's why people tend to believe what they want to believe. For example, they want to believe that the, that there's a pandemic, that all of these are just you know employed for big pharma to sell us something, that this is uh, created by the new world order. Or uh, what, can you can you at least address that doc? What are your views about this one? Okay, so full disclosure, I go back to pharma. And I've been yeah. working in pharma for many years now. Mm-hmm. And you know, wala kami gagawin sa office nga. Oh, ano yung wanted today to destroy the world? Wala kami gagawin na. <laughs> I mean, what what do you want yeah. is to use science and the uh, mm-hmm. technology to improve lives. You know, to, mm-hmm. to cure disease, to prevent disease. And and I can tell you, hindi lang because I work here. It, it's really what we want to do is to use science and innovation to improve the world. And um, I, I understand where this is coming from. Kay kadamo si muna si mga cases na ang pharma muni nag, uh, let's say, um, they they do things to sell more drugs. For example, for example, um, mas kindi indi, indi indicated ang specific drug for this. Um, ibaligyan nila sa mga tao. And and those things happened decades ago. And I um, admittedly they happened. Diba? Mm. But at the moment, grabe ka stricto ang industry, ang, ang guidelines in um, public health. And uh, we have more systems in place to make sure na hindi na hindi matabo. Um, wala ko ginahambal nga hindi na matabo ever. But you know, it's 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 a different world now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, and I think we should also remember na ang, ang contribution sing pharma sa, sa kalibutan in general yeah. is... Is is just immense, you know, with mm, yeah. with all these cancer uh, drugs, with all these vaccines from polio to now COVID. Imagine kung wala big pharma, wala tasing COVID vaccines at Yes, and then there are a lot of uh, diseases of uh, na wala na exist because of because of uh, scientific uh, progress. Thanks to again, pharma funded ng mga research. Uh, finally, doc, um, what can you? Uh, can we have an expert's advice okay for those who are you know a little bit resisting the idea of being vaccinated so ako ang what i usually tell people is um, getting the vaccine is of course protecting you yourself from hmm. serious disease or from dying that's one it also protects the people around you, your friends, your loved ones, your family. That's the second thing. And the third mm-hmm. thing, you're doing it for the world, you know, for the herd mm-hmm. immunity that we talked about. Because the more of us uh, will um, have this mentality ng mapabakuna, the faster for us to reach herd immunity and the faster um, for the world or at least your country or your region or your city to um, to beat the the outbreak and so it's it's really not just for you it's for the people around you and, and for the world so you're basically doing it uh, for a for a for the community yes dr melvin thank you very much for your time we hope that this is not the last time i uh, you would accept our invitation thank you very much much appreciated doc thank you miss hannah and uh, stay safe everyone